Damn it. It's completely dead. assistant for Dr. Styles. Dr. David Stiles and his wife, Laura Ebenthorpe Stiles, left a fundraising dinner in Oxford last evening and were driving home when, when their car was hit broadside. According to eyewitnesses, the second vehicle was hurtling down a crossroad at a tremendous speed. It ran a give way sign and plunged into... Laura Stiles was pronounced dead on the scene and David Stiles was rushed. Samantha, please. They're not coming home. Come on, kid. Time to go. told me what we're doing for my birthday tomorrow. I hope you haven't planned anything epic or embarrassing. It's your birthday tomorrow? Slip my mind. Mm-hmm. As if you'd miss any opportunity to be devious.
He'll be joining us for a few days in Venice at Christmas. Won't that be marvelous? I'm glad you talked me into it. It should be so lovely with all the decorations and the ceremonies in the cathedrals. Blue tiles. Blue tiles. Check the cars, David. Check the cars, David. your mother tell you it's not polite to stare? I'm oh, sorry. The stairs are behind you. Leave now if you can't do better than that. No, I thought you'd be old or something. Mrs. Dalton said... Uh, never mind. You kept me waiting. Bad way to start your tenure here, Miss... What the hell is your name, anyway? Sam Everett. What the hell is yours? I'll take that as a rhetorical question. If you don't know who you're working for, you really are a fool. What's your area of study? English lit. <laughs> Appropriately worthless. Yeah, well, I considered studying acts of war, but I failed the howitzer's test. That gets a lot of freshmen, I'm told. Where did you get this? A jumble sale in a village outside Liverpool. I like old things. Why? My mother wore a necklace identical to this one. It was probably given to charity after her death. How bizarre. I've had to make most of the preparation myself. That's why I pay you, because your time can be wasted on menial tasks mine can't. Next time, come when I ask, or don't bother showing up at all. Next time? So I have the job? As if I had nothing better to do than to try out new assistants. In that case, I'd like a room, board, and a hundred pounds a week. First week paid in advance. Are you quite insane? You'll practically have me full time since I'll be living here. You can run me ragged. Menially speaking. Besides, you don't have time to look for someone else. Make these beds. The linens are on the counter. I'll return at a quarter to. When the students arrive, make sure they know what to expect before bringing them down here. But you haven't told me anything about tonight. Inform them about me. Do we get a last request, Doc? How about an appeal? I have a wife and kids to support, you know. <laughs> okay, not really, but uh, I have a, a grandmother who liked me once. Yeah, it was 1989. Sit still. This isn't going to hurt. These machines are about as painful as x-rays, and far less carcinogenic. I trust you, Dr. Stiles. 
good. This will require nothing from any of you except a bit of imagination. Now, I want you to relax. Relax, lay back and close your eyes. You're not going to fall asleep, but you will be deeply, deeply relaxed. Let go of all thoughts, all tensions. Let go of everything but the sound of my voice. You're standing in a field, and your eyes are closed. It's night, and the air is chilly. You're a little cold in the athletic suit you have on, but you know you'll be warming up soon. You smell freshly mown grass on the night breeze. Your eyes remain closed as you reach up in a stretch. Up and up, fingers reaching for the sky. You feel the pull all the way down your arms, your sides, your legs, all the way to your toes. Take a deep breath of cold air and push higher. Hold it and exhale. Swing your arms down, relax. In a moment, you will open your eyes and see that you're at Horsepath Track. You came here for a night run. Your muscles are in need of a run and you're looking forward to this immensely. When you open your eyes, you will see that it is a clear night. The field is lit with incandescent light from the lampposts and the track is a dark, muddy red. You have the entire place to yourself. Now, in your mind, open your eyes and begin very slowly at first, very easily, to run. The head lab rat has arrived. You call us rats one more time and I'll castrate you. Lambs. What? We're lambs, not rats. The Lambs Club. What's that supposed to mean? I like it. It's better than rats. Brilliant, darling. Oh, fine. The Lambs Club. But what about Styles? What about the mad scientist who's sucking our brains dry? He's doing no such thing. Yeah, well, he's weird enough to do it. Come on, Harvey. He's not your punchline. People are always afraid of what they don't understand. Are you so perfect and popular that you can point the finger of weirdness at David Stiles? Are any of you? The man has been through hell. His wife was killed right in front of him in an accident. He himself was badly burned, and he must have gone through God knows how many skin grafts. But he's not mentally damaged. Or even weird. I heard it myself from an expert who's seen Dr. Stiles' medical reports. There's nothing wrong with him. He just likes his privacy. And can you blame him when everyone is so vicious? As for me, if I hear one more person pass on that lame gossip, I'm going to personally stuff it back down their throats. So you don't believe the gossip then? Who told you about Stiles' medical reports? Mr. Headley, I never believed anything bad about Dr. Stiles. The man can do what he likes as far as I'm concerned. My family is legendary for eccentrics. My grandmama liked to get naked on the roof and wave to planes. Well, who doesn't? But what about the track? I've seen the plan for the experiment myself. It's routine. Even the department head approved it. The prank at the track is completely unrelated. Dr. Stiles is perfectly normal!
Do you have something to say to me, Miss Everett? No. Turn that thing off, please. Dr. Stiles, are you sure it's safe after what happened last night? Safe? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? concern himself with fraternity pranks. I still feel as nervous as a virgin on prom night. Settle down. I'm not paying you to chitter-chatter. Lie back and close your eyes. Relax. Sink into the bed. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Tonight, you're at the swimming pool at St. Edmund. Your eyes are closed and you're standing on the rough cement surface next to the pool. You grip and relax your bare feet. Your toes can feel all the tiny bumps and smooth paint of the cement. You smell the chlorine in the air and feel dampness on your skin. When you open your eyes, you will see a pleasant illumination from the lamps reflecting off the water. Get out! Get out! Nice evening. Yes. Supposed to be a good show tonight. Or an interesting one at any rate. Lady Byron? The club's a buzz. Word is she's got a game going on up at Oxford. Quite a good one too. Game? What kind of game? A grand game. It would have to be good for the club to give someone like her a membership. Street performer, you know. American. But from what I've heard, it might be that. Wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, for our first act this evening, something fresh, something new in London town. This young magician has never before graced our stage. So prepare to be amazed, prepare to be enthralled and delighted by Lady Byron. I mean, Dr. Stiles. You're very good. But unfortunately, the game you orchestrated will not work out as planned. What? Look, maybe I should have told you about... about my magic. But what's happening to you is not my game. I mean, how did you even... how did you... Find out? Not relevant. I know, and it's over. I can see how this looks. But I know who's pulling the game on you. I proved it today. If you just... Really? And you're a student at St. Edmunds and an English lit major. I... I have to admit, you were brilliant. 
even hunting down my mother's necklace just to make sure you got taken on. The funny thing is, you went to all that trouble and there really is something going on at Dreadhill. And you with your ridiculous pranks at the track and pool. Ridiculous? Do you even know what would be involved? Those illusions were way beyond me. Stop lying, Sam. I called that foster care office, you know, and found out something real about you at any rate. I could almost feel sorry for you if you hadn't tried to ruin my life. As for today, you're lucky no one was killed in that cafeteria. Did it not occur to you that someone could get hurt? Or were you too blinded by your big debut? I don't even know what you're talking about. All of your potential, and you throw it away to get into a damn magic club. I know you won't believe anything I say, but all I ever wanted to do was help you. Help me? Why would you? I want you cleared out of Dreadhill by morning. If you're gone, I might not turn you into the police. I never want to see your face again. have to do with the game at Oxford. The person you're looking for is not an illusionist. As long as you're looking for one, you won't see the real culprit. <gasps> oh my god. I know who did it! my coat. Angela's gone! Where would she have gone? Do you know? David, Angela's not right in the head. She's obsessed with you. And there's this whole weird thing about her father. All the incidents at the school were related to this picture of her dad that I saw in her room. He died when his restaurant burned down. Burned down? Yeah. Poor Angela. It must have really screwed her up. But what I don't get is how she does this stuff. Like the weight room. There were things flying around and... <gasps> your face. It's bad, isn't it? E yeah, pretty bad. Now, where would she have gone? I think I know. I'll tell you everything on the way there. 
Angela, stop. We have to forgive each other. And ourselves. I want to help you control this thing so it doesn't cause any more pain. I should have listened to you that day in my office. What... what you did was wrong. But I don't believe you meant to hurt Laura. You can't control fairies. They do what they like. I used to love fairies. But they hurt my daddy. They were very bad. Angela, come here. Come sit down. That's a good girl. <laughs> You're not my da. You're not Jesse Mulholland. Angela. <gasps> oh, there he is. Do you see him? He's right there. Angela, listen to me. What happened to your father was not your fault. He loved you. He would have wanted you to get help. Fairies can fly. went to their memorial. It was so sad. Hardly anyone was there. I can't stop thinking about her. Why would anyone kill themselves? After the cafeteria incident, she acted so strange, as if she felt responsible. That's crazy. Did you say you saw something on her brain scan, Dr. Stiles? What was it? It was in the Massa Intermedia. It's a small region present in some, but not all, brains. We don't know what it does. Even when it is present, no neural activity is ever seen there. But it was lit up in Angela's scans, right before the events that took place on campus. So what? She was some kind of alien or something? She really did cause those events on campus? With a mind? She wasn't an alien, merely a very unusual human being. As for the events on campus, I don't have proof of anything. Nothing unusual came up in the autopsy. And neither do any of you have proof of anything. So I remind you that discretion is the better part of valor. Man, wild. So what do you do next, Dr. Stiles? Research. Lots of research. So you're staying here with Dr. Tall, Dark and Deadly? I'd be an idiot to walk away from a house like this. Great food and a hundred pounds a week. The lady doth protest too much. <sighs> Tamansa, come and get this damn rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> 